All right, today I'll be going over installing Linux Mint. So in case you're familiar, Linux Mint is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu that looks a lot like Windows out of the box. And it would actually be my second choice for Windows users coming over to Linux. And by the way, my first choice would be Ubuntu. But anyway, in this video, I'm actually going to be installing Linux Mint on a dual boot with Windows, since that's what I'd recommend a Linux newbie do, just to allow for a smooth transition over to Linux. But anyway, you're going to need a couple of pre requisites before you begin. The first one you're going to need is a computer, obviously, and the second thing you're going to need is an unused flash drive to flash the Linux Mint ISO to. Now, by the way, I just want to say that before you start this process, you're going to want to tweak your BIOS settings. So basically, you're going to find your BIOS key, which may be escape, F2, F10, F12, or delete, depending on what computer you have. And once you're in there, you're going to want to disable secure boot. And if you can't figure out how to do that, you can always just look up how to do it with your specific computer, since this is one thing where pretty much every computer is going to be different. So unfortunately, I can't really show you how to do that. Now, the reason why I'm recommending you disable Secure Boot is because it has been known to cause issues with Linux and dual boots. And besides, for a Linux system, it doesn't really provide that much security, if any at all. In fact, I'd actually say it does more harm than good for Linux systems, because then it restricts what you can run by only allowing signed firmware to boot. So for a Linux user, it's more like restricted boot. But anyway, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to walk you through the process of installing Linux Mint on a dual boot with Windows. All right, so now what you're going to want to do is open up your web browser and then go to linuxmint.com and then you're going to hover over download and then click on Linux Mint 20.2 and then you're going to scroll down to download links and then it'll give you three different versions. The one I'd recommend is the Cinnamon Edition, so we're going to click on that and then you're going to pick a local mirror to download from. Now this will be based on your country. I'd actually go with the one listed at the top from your country. I'm in Canada, so I'm going to choose the top one for Canada, which in this this case is Manitoba Unix user group. We're going to click on that and then you're going to download it. So now I've already downloaded this file. I've got it right here on my desktop. So now I'm going to go to bolina.io slash etcher. It auto completed for me. And now you're going to click this little down arrow and then click on the portable version and then it'll go download that. Now I'm going to cancel it because I've already downloaded the file. I've got it right here on my desktop. So now what you're going to do is get out your flash drive. And now once you've got that plugged in, you're going to go over to it and check to make sure that there's nothing on it that you need because it will be erased during this process. And by the way, this should be the only USB device plugged into your computer for this entire process, just so that way you don't get confused as to what's the right USB device. And remember, it'll also need to be at least four gigabytes in size. But anyway, you're going to hit close. And now you're going to open up Bellina Etcher. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click flash from file and then locate your file here and then open it up. However, if it's on your desktop, you can also just drag it and drop it in here. And then once it's in there, you're going to click select target, and then you're going to select your flash drive. Now this is one benefit of having your Linux Mint install drive as the only drive plugged into your system, so then you don't have any decision to make. Now, once more, you want to make absolutely sure that there's nothing on this drive that you need because it will be erased. But anyway, you're going to click select, and then flash. And then if user account control prompts you, you're going to click yes, and then it'll go flash your Linux Mint ISO to your flash drive. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, and once it says flash complete, you're going to close out of Bellina Etcher, and then you're going to want to take note of your boot menu key. On my computer, it's the escape key. However, on a lot of computers, it'll be F2, F9, F10, F12, delete. It depends on the make and model. But anyway, once you got that noted down, you're going to go to the start menu, click power, restart, and then get ready to press your boot menu key. I'd actually start pressing it now once your screen goes blank. Now, I know this isn't a common setup, like most computers will actually bring you directly into the boot menu once you press the boot menu key and the boot menu and BIOS menu are separate. But for my computer, well actually this is a virtual machine, the BIOS menu and the boot menu are combined. So in my case, I'm going to have to go down to boot manager. Now for most people, you don't have to do this. But anyway, now once you're in the boot menu, we're going to go down to your USB device by using the up and down arrow keys. Mine called it generic mass storage. But anyway, once you've got that highlighted, you're going to hit enter. And now it should bring you to this screen. You're just going to hit start Linux Mint 20.2. 
and then it'll boot you into Linux Mint. And by the way, if you do nothing for five seconds, it'll actually automatically select that option for you. But anyway, once it's all booted, you should be greeted with the Linux Mint desktop. So now you can go play around with this for a little bit just to see if you like it or not. In fact, I'd actually encourage it just to make sure that all your hardware works. If something doesn't work, the Linux community will be more than happy to help. And I've personally never had a problem with hardware compatibility. But anyway, we're gonna go and double click on install Linux Mint, and then it'll bring us to the installer. Now this installer actually very closely resembles Ubuntu's installer because Linux Mint is actually based on Ubuntu. But anyway, we're gonna choose our language, then click continue, and then we're gonna select our keyboard layout. English US is perfect for us and you can test your keyboard here just to make sure that it works and then click continue and I would install multimedia codecs and hit continue so now this is the most critical part of the installation process in our case since we're dual booting we're gonna select install Linux Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager which is already selected for us now if you have a legacy BIOS it'll probably call it Windows 10 or whatever version of Windows you have now if you wanted to install pure Linux Mint you can go erase your disk and install Linux Mint however if you're completely new to Linux, I would actually suggest dual booting just to allow you to more easily migrate between Windows and Linux in terms of getting all your applications and data switched over and finding alternatives for applications that you need to use that aren't compatible with Linux. But anyway, you're going to click continue and then it'll bring you to this screen, which will allow you to allocate how much space you want to assign to each operating system. This side is your Windows and this side is your Linux Mint. You can drag this slider left to right to change the allocation. I'm going to give it about half and half, but anyway, once you're done, you're going to click install now, and then it'll give you this prompt. You're just going to click continue, and then it's warning you about the formatting of your partitions, but your windows will be intact. Don't worry, this is only formatting the new Linux Mint partition that we just created, but anyway, we're going to click continue, and then we're going to select our time zone, which in our case is Toronto, then click continue, and then you're going to just punch in your name, and let's give this a more logical name like Linux PC and then our username is already selected for us. Now you can feel free to change this right now, but just be aware that once the user account's created, you cannot change it later, just a heads up. But anyway, we're gonna pick a password. This should be a strong password. And then you're gonna select require my password to log in. Don't do login automatically, because if you do that, anyone who has physical access to your computer can just boot it up and access all your data, which you don't want. And besides, this option was just meant for virtual machine installs that are already protected by the host system login. Like virtual machines are really the only case scenario where I'd actually use that. But anyway, once you've made sure that require my password to login is selected, you can come down here to encrypt my home folder. Now, if you choose not to do this now, I'll go over how to do this after installation in part five of this video, but I would actually normally check this. However, in my case, since I'm planning on doing this later, again, for part five of this guide, I'm not gonna bother with it now. So I'm gonna click continue. And then it's gonna go install Linux Mint, and this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, now once it says installation complete, you're gonna click restart now, and then it'll ask you to remove the installation medium, which in this case is our flash drive, and then hit enter. And now it'll go reboot our system, and we should be presented with our grub menu, which will allow us to choose between Linux Mint and Windows. You can just use the up and down arrow keys to navigate through the grub menu, and then once you've got your OS of choice highlighted, you just hit enter, and it'll boot from that. And that was how to install Linux Mint on a dual boot with Windows. Now, if you're ever having any issues, you can always look up what problem you're having, and odds are you'll find a solution. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. And in my next video, I'll be going over navigating the Linux Mint desktop. So stay tuned for that video.